The Hebrew Bible and the Roman World Calendars by Stiley W. Hayward D.D. The Gregorian calendar is used as the civil calendar by several countries that utilize other calendars for religious purposes. Iran and Afghanistan, which utilize the solar hydri calendar, are notable exceptions. The Gregorian calendar is the most widely used calendar on the planet. It was announced in October 1582 by Pope Gregory XIII as an adjustment of, and replacement for, the Julian calendar. The surplus leap days generated by the Julian method had caused the calendar to drift since the First Council of Nicaea. In AD 325, causing the northern spring equinox to occur long before its nominal March 21st date. This day was significant to Christian churches since it was crucial in determining the date of Easter. In addition, because astronomical new moons occurred four days before the estimated dates. The reform changed the lunar cycle employed by the church to compute the date for Easter. The calendar remained primarily based on the same geocentric idea as its predecessor. Despite minor adjustments brought about by the reform, the Catholic countries of Europe and their overseas holdings were the first to accept the reform. The Protestant and Eastern Orthodox countries followed suit during the next three centuries. With Greece becoming the final European country to adopt the improved calendar for civil purposes exclusively in 1923. The Gregorian calendar is a solar calendar with 12 months of 28 to 31 days each, similar to the Julian calendar. Both calendars have 365 days in a year, with a leap day added to February in leap years. The Gregorian calendar uses the same months and month lengths as the Julian calendar. The sole distinction is that the Gregorian reform eliminated a leap day every 300 years while maintaining the leap day. Every four years, a leap year occurs, and the leap day was traditionally inserted by doubling February 24th. However, it is currently common practice to number the days of February consecutively with no pauses. With February 29th serving as the leap day, the Catholic Church used to delay February feasts after the 23rd by one day in leap years before the 1969 revision of its general Roman calendar, Masses celebrated according to the former. Calendars still show this delay. The Julian calendar was reformatted into the Gregorian calendar. It was established by Pope Gregory, after whom the calendar is named, XIII's papal bull inter gravissimas, issued February 24, 1582. The change was made to restore the Easter celebration back to the time of year when it was first introduced by the early church. The Julian calendar's inaccuracy, the assumption that there are exactly 365.25 days in a year, had caused the calendar's date of the equinox to deviate from observed reality, introducing a mistake into the computation of the date of Easter. Although the First Council of Nicaea recommended that all Christians celebrate Easter on the same day in 325, it took nearly five centuries for nearly all Christians to achieve that goal by adopting the Church of Alexandria's customs. The Catholic Church deemed the rising divergence between the canonical date of the equinox and observed reality. Intolerable since the date of Easter is a function, the computus, of the date of the Northern Hemisphere spring equinox. Easter is observed on the Sunday after the ecclesiastical full moon on or after March 21st. A date chosen to approximate the March equinox. European scholars have been aware of the calendar drift since the early Middle Ages. In the 8th century, Bede demonstrated that the accumulated error in his time was more than three days. Roger Bacon Around 1550 the inaccuracy was expected to be seven or eight days at 1200. Dante, around c. 1300 was well aware of the need for a new calendar. Pope Sixtus IV made an attempt to move forward with such reforms. 
when he brought Reggio Montanus to the Vatican in 1475. The project was halted, however, when Reggio Montanus died shortly after arriving in Rome. The matter became increasingly important as astronomical knowledge and observational precision improved towards the end of the 15th century. Several publications in the following decades, including two papers delivered to the Vatican by the University of Salamanca in 1515 and 1578, urged for a calendar reform, but the initiative was not revived until the 1540s. And it was finally implemented under Pope Gregory the 13th, R 1572 to 1585. The Council of Trent authorized Pope Paul III to revise the calendar in 1545, demanding that the date of the vernal equinox be restored to that of the First Council of Nicaea in 325, and that a calendar change be made to prevent further drift. This would allow for a more consistent and precise Easter feast schedule. A compendium was given to professional mathematicians outside the reform panel for feedback in 1577. Some of these specialists, such as Gian Battista Benedetti and Giuseppe Melito, thought Easter should be calculated using the true motions of the sun and moon rather than a tabular technique. But their suggestions were ignored. The reform approved was a modification of a proposal made by Aloysius Lilius, a Calabrian doctor, or Lilio. Do you see how the Catholic Church is in charge of our current calendar? And how the Catholic Church is not in control of God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, or God's Word, the Bible. Would you think that God would date any of his work by the work of the Catholic Church? The answer is no. Easter is not a born-again Bible believer observance holiday. The Pope awarded one Antony Lilio the sole right to print the calendar for ten years a month after decreeing the reform. With a brief dated April 3, 1582, Vincenzo Occulti printed the Lunario Novo Secondo La Nuova Reforma, one of the first calendars printed in Rome after the reform. With papal license and Lilio's signature, con licentia delle superiori, et permissu ant, onii lillage. On September 20, 1582, the papal brief was cancelled because Antonio Lilio was unable to keep up with the demand for Copies. Despite the fact that Gregory's reform was carried out in the most solemn of ways, the bull had no authority outside of the Catholic Church, of which he was the supreme ecclesiastical authority, and the papal states, which he personally ruled. He was suggesting modifications to the civil calendar, which he didn't have any control over, to have legal effect. They must be adopted by the civil authorities in each country. The Bull Inter Gravissimas established Catholic Church law in 1582, but Protestant churches, Eastern Orthodox churches, Oriental Orthodox churches, and a few others did not recognize it. As a result, the dates on which different Christian denominations celebrated Easter and related holidays diverged once more. Philip II of Spain authorized the switch from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar on September 29, 1582. Because Philip was the ruler of Spain, Portugal, and a big chunk of Italy at the time. This had a significant impact on most of Roman Catholic Europe. The new calendar was established on the date stated by the bull in these countries. As well as in the Polish, Lithuanian Commonwealth, ruled by Anna Jagielon, and the Papal States, with Julian Thursday. October 4, 1582, being followed by Gregorian Friday, October 15, 1582. Due to communication delays, the Spanish and Portuguese colonies were de facto a little later. Many Protestant countries protested to the adoption of a Catholic innovation at first. And some Protestants suspected the new calendar was part of a conspiracy to entice them back into the Catholic fold. The British, for example, could not bring themselves to publicly embrace the Catholic system, the annex to their calendar, New Style, Act of 1750 created a computation for the date of Easter that produced the same result as 
Gregory's norms, but without mentioning him, the Gregorian calendar was adopted by Britain and the British Empire, which included the eastern part of what is now the United States. In 1752. In 1753, Sweden became the next country to join. The Julian months, which contain Latinate names and irregular numbers of days, were retained in the Gregorian calendar. January, 31 days, from Latin menses Ianuarius. Month of Janus the Roman god of gates, doorways, beginnings, and endings. February, 28 days in common and 29 in leap years, from Latin menses Februarius, month of the Februa. The Roman festival of purgation and purification, cognate with fever, and the Proto-Indo-European word for sulfur. March, 31 days, from Latin menses Martius, month of Mars, Roman god of war. April, 30 days. From Latin menses Aprilis, of uncertain meaning, but usually derived from some form of the verb aperire, to open or. The name of the goddess Aphrodite. May, 31 days, from Latin menses Maius, month of Maya, a Roman vegetation goddess. June, 30 days, from Latin menses Iunius, month of Juno, the Roman goddess of marriage, childbirth, and rule. July, 31 days, from Latin menses Iulius, month of Julius Caesar, the month of Caesar's birth. Instituted in 44 BC. August, 31 days, from Latin menses Augustus, month of Augustus. Instituted by Augustus in 8 BC in agreement with July and from the occurrence during the month of several important events during his rise to power. September, 30 days, from Latin menses September, 7th month, of the 10-month Roman year of Romulus c. 750 BC. October, 31 days, from Latin menses October, 8th month, of the 10-month Roman year of Romulus c. 750 BC. November, 30 days, from Latin menses November, 9th month, of the 10-month Roman year of Romulus c. 750 BC. December, 31 days, from Latin menses December, 10th month, of the 10-month Roman year of Romulus c. 750 BC. In the Northern Hemisphere, January is a winter month, but in the Southern Hemisphere, it is a summer month. Janus. The Roman god of new beginnings inspired the name. The Gregorian calendar's first month, January, has 31 days. Janus Orianus, the Roman deity of passage and new beginnings, is the source of the month's name. The Latin word enus implies arched entryway. It comes from the term janitor, which originally meant gatekeeper. There were only 10 months in the original Roman calendar. The months of January and February did not exist. The year began in March. The two winter months are thought to have been created by the Roman king Numa Pompilius around 700 BC. Menses Iannuarius, or the month of Iannus, the ancient Roman deity of beginnings, transit, and time itself, was the name given to January. The Roman year began in March. Despite the fact that January had 29 days and came after December, a revolt prompted the Roman Senate to move the civil year's start date from March to January 1 in 154 BC. January became the first month of the year 153 BCE after this administrative reorganization. The majority of Romans continued to celebrate the new year in March, it is unclear when this began to alter. But it could have taken hundreds of years. Julius Caesar developed a new calendar system, the Julian calendar. In the year 46 BC, he extended the year by 10 days and instituted the leap year. January was stretched to 31 days in the Julian calendar. Janus slash den slash JNS, Latin, Ianus, Ians, is the deity of beginnings, gates, transitions, time, duality, entrances, passages, frames, and ends in ancient Roman religion and myth. He is frequently represented with two faces. The month of January is named after the Roman god Janus, Iannuarius, comma. Janus presided over the start and end of battles. 
as well as war and peace. In times of conflict, the gates of a building named for him in Rome, not a temple, as it is commonly known. But an open enclosure with gates at each end, were opened, and in times of peace, they were closed. While the gods' essential nature is questioned, most modern academics believe that the gods' functions are organized around a single principle, presiding over all beginnings and transitions, sacred and profane, whether abstract or real. In both the Julian and Gregorian calendars, February is the second month of the year. The Roman month Februarius was called after the purification ceremony Februa which took place on February 15th, full moon, in the old lunar Roman calendar, and was named after the Latin term februum, which means purification. Because the Romans traditionally believed winter to be a monthless period, Embers c. 450 BC, February was the last month of the calendar year, then it became the second month. January and February were the final two months to be introduced to the Roman calendar. Numa Pompilius added them in 713 BC. Until the period of the Decembers, c. 450 BC. February was the last month of the calendar year, then it became the second month. The Old English titles Samanath, Mud Month, and Kale Monath, called for cabbage, as well as Charlemagne's designation. Hornung are all historical names for February. The month is named Helmiku in Finnish, which means month of the pearl. Because when snow melts on tree branches, it generates droplets, which freeze and look like ice pearls. The month is known as Ludi or Ludi in Polish and Ukrainian, respectively, and means ice or harsh frost. The month is called Sechko O in Macedonian, which means cutting month, wood. It is known in Czech as Nor, which means month of submersion, of river ice. In both the Julian and Gregorian calendars, March is the third month of the year. March takes its name from Martius, the first month of the Roman calendar. It was called after Mars. The Roman god of war and, via his sons Romulus and Remus, an ancestor of the Roman people. Martius was the first month of the warfare season, and the festivals conducted in his honor during the month were. Followed by others in October. When the season for these activities ended, even as late as 153 BC, Martius was the first month of the Roman calendar year, and various religious observances in the first part of the month were originally New Year's celebrations. Even in late antiquity, Roman mosaics depicting the months often put March 1st. Until the end of the 15th century, March 1st was the start of the numbered year in Russia. Great Britain and its colonies used the Julian calendar until 1752. When they switched to the Gregorian calendar, the fiscal year in the UK continues to begin on April 6. Initially identical to March 25th in the former Julian calendar. In many other cultures and religions, the beginning of the new year is still celebrated in March. Mars, the Roman god of war, was a popular deity among the Roman Empire's citizens, as well as the city of Rome's purported heavenly protector. Mars was originally a god of vegetation and the guardian of cattle and fields. But when the Roman Empire expanded through military conquest, he became connected with combat. Mars was Rome's tutelary god and as the legendary father of the city's founder, Romulus. All Romans were thought to be descended from him. Mars was also linked to Quirinus, a Sabine god who was thought to be Romulus' spirit. As the Roman Empire spread across northern Europe, Mars became associated with Celtic gods of war, particularly in Roman Britain, where he was revered by the Celts as a benign protector, healer, and tribe god. In February, March, and October, as well as one on June 1st, Mars staged a series of festivals. The Aquaria horse races were conducted on February 27th and March 14th. The Firii Marti, loosely translated as Mars festivals, were commemorated on March 1st. The Tubalustrium was commemorated on March 23rd by cleansing weapons and war trumpets. 
The name of the third month of the year, March, is derived from Mars via the Roman month Martius, which was considered a lucky time to go to war. Another adjective form of Mars, martial, from martialis, is instead associated with war, as in martial law. April is the fourth month of the year in the Gregorian calendar. The fifth in the early Julian. The Latin name Aprilis was given to this month by the Romans, but its origin is unknown. The traditional derivation is derived from the verb aperire, which means to open. In reference to the season when trees and flowers begin to open. As evidenced by the contemporary Greek word o, anixi, opening, for spring. April was holy to the goddess Venus, and her veneralia was held on the first day, hence it has been proposed that Aprilis was originally her month Aphrolis, from her comparable Greek goddess name Aphrodite, Aphros, or from the Etruscan name Apro, Aper or Apris. As suggested by Jacob Grimm, is the name of a hypothetical god or hero. Venus was offered official, state-sponsored, cult in certain festivals of the Roman calendar. Her sacred month was April, Latin menses Aprilis, which Roman etymologists understood to derive from Aperire, to open. With reference to the springtime blossoming of trees and flowers. May is a spring month in the northern half of the world, and a fall month in the southern half. It is likely named after Maya, the goddess of growth. May is derived from the Latin Maeus, which most likely refers to the goddess Maya, both in nature and in business. She personified the concept of growth. Others associate Maeus with Myers, or bigger ones, the ancestors. Floralia, a fertility festival, was held in May by the ancient Romans. Floralia, which took place from April 27th to May 3rd, featured theater performances, dance, and banquets. For a prosperous crop, the Romans sacrificed a pregnant sow to the earth goddess Terra. Maya personified the concept of development in ancient Roman religion and myth. As her name was supposed to be related to the comparative word Maeus, Maer bigger, greater. She may have started out as a homonym unrelated to the Greek Maya whose story she inherited through Hellenization of Latin literature and culture. May, Latin Maeus, is thought to be named after Maya, while ancient etymologists also linked it to the Maya's ancestors, which comes from the adjective Maeus, Maya, which means greater in terms of generational precedence. The Lara's Prestites were honored as the city's defenders on May 1st, and the Flamen of Vulcan sacrificed a pregnant sow to Maya. A typical tribute to an earth goddess that reaffirms the archaic prayer formula's link between Vulcan and Maya. June is a summer month in the northern half of the world, and a winter month in the southern half. It is named after Juno, the goddess of youth. Juno is the goddess of marriage in Roman mythology. She is also the consort and wife of the principal god Jupiter as well as a defender of Rome and the Roman people. She is the most important and powerful of the Roman deities, as well as the goddess of the Roman state. Juno Regina, or Queen Juno, was the name given to her because of her prominence among the gods and goddesses. Juno was given a terrified lily that fertilized her with a one touch, resulting in the birth of Mars. Because of her pregnancy and their virginal birth, Certain interpretations of Juno's biography link her to the Virgin. Mary of Christianity The myth of Juno and the sacred lily is often associated with the fleur-de-lis as a symbol. Girls were inducted into adult life under the auspices of Juno Sororia, which meant sister, when they reached puberty. Purification ceremonies included going under the Tigillum Sororium, a wooden yoke or crossbeam. The contemporary name sorority, or sisterhood, is derived from this title sororia. July is the seventh month of the Julian and Gregorian calendars, and the fourth of seven months with a length of 31 days between June and August. 
It was called by the Roman Senate in 44 BC in honor of Roman General Julius Caesar, as it was his birthday month. Quintilus was the name given to the fifth month of the 10-month calendar before 713 BC. Gaius Julius Caesar, Latin, I use Julius Caesar, July 12, 100 BC, March 15, 44 BC, was a Roman general and statesman who lived from July 12, 100 BC to March 15, 44 BC. Caesar led the Roman legions in the Gallic Wars before defeating his political rival Pompey in a civil war and ascending to the position of dictator of Rome from 49 BC to 44 BC. He was a pivotal figure in the events that led to the Roman Republic's demise and the emergence of the Roman Empire. By crossing the Rubicon and advancing towards Rome with an army in 49 BC, Caesar publicly rejected the Senate's authority. This sparked Caesar's civil war, which he eventually won, giving him near unchallenged authority and influence in 45 BC. Caesar started a program of social and governmental reforms after attaining power, including the introduction of the Julian calendar. He granted citizenship to many people from the Roman Republic's outlying regions. He pushed for land reform and veteran assistance. He consolidated the Republic's administration and was later declared dictator for life, dictator perpetuo. The elites were enraged by his populist and dictatorial measures. And they began to plot against him. On the Ides of March, March 15, 44 BC, Caesar was assassinated by a group of rebellious senators led by Brutus and Cassius, who stabbed him to death. August is the last month of summer in the northern half of the world. It is named after the first Roman emperor, Augustus Caesar. Augustus Caesar was the first and, by most measures, greatest Roman emperor, 27 BCE 14 CE. On September 23, 63 BC, Gaius Octavius Thurinus was born. In 44 BC, his great uncle Julius Caesar adopted him and gave him the name Gaius. Julius Caesar. The Senate bestowed the epithet Augustus, the distinguished one, on him in 27 BC. And he became Gaius Julius Caesar Augustus. Augustus' title of Imperator, or Commander in Chief, from which the English word Emperor is derived, consolidated his dominance in the provinces, where he was already well liked by his army's soldiers. In his honor, the month of August was created. Augustus Caesar was awarded Imperium Maius, supreme power, over every province in the Roman Empire in 19 BC. On, the first emperor of Rome and the standard by which all subsequent emperors would be measured. Augustus was named Pater Patri, or father of the country, in 2 BC. Augustus died in 14 AD at Nola. I found Rome a city of clay but left it a city of marble. Augustus' official final words, which perfectly define Augustus' achievements during his time as emperor. His dying words, according to his wife Livia Drusilla and adoptive son Tiberius, are, 14 to 37 AD were. Have I played the part well? Then applaud as I walk away. Augustus' body was returned to Rome, and all businesses in Rome were closed on the day of his funeral out of respect for. Ian Calendars the emperor. He was followed by Tiberius, whom he had adopted in 4 AD, and who read the eulogy during Augustus. Notoriously grand burial, together with his own son, Drusus. September is the ninth month of the year in the Julian and Gregorian calendars. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, September marks the start of the ecclesiastical year. In many Northern Hemisphere nations, it is the start of the academic year. With children returning to school after the summer break, sometimes on the first day of the month. In the first known Roman calendar, the calendar of Romulus c. 750 BC, September, from Latin Septem. 7 was initially the seventh of ten months, with March, Latin Martius. 
being the first month of the year until maybe as late as 451 BC. September became the ninth month after the calendar reform that added January and February to the beginning of the year, although it kept its name. It was 29 days until the Julian reform, which added one day to the count. October is the tenth month of the year in the Julian and Gregorian calendar. After January and February were introduced into the calendar that had been constructed by the Romans, October preserved its name from the Latin and Greek oct meaning eight in the old calendar of Romulus c. 750 BC. Winterfilleth, Interfil, was the name given to it by the Anglo Saxons since winter was considered to begin at this full moon. November is the eleventh and penultimate month of the year in the Julian and Gregorian calendars. November was the ninth month in Romulus calendar, about 750 BC. When January and February were introduced to the Roman calendar, November kept its name from the Latin Novum, which means nine. December is the twelfth and the final month of the year in the Julian and Gregorian calendars. December was originally the tenth month of the year in Romulus c. 750 BC calendar which began in March and hence gained its name from the Latin word decim, meaning ten. The day between Saturday and Monday is known as Sunday. Sunday is a day of relaxation and a part of the weekend in most Western countries, but it is the first day of the week in much of the rest of the globe. Sunday is widely honored as a day of worship and relaxation by most observant Christians, who recognize it as the Lord's Day and the day of Christ's resurrection in the United States, Canada, China, Japan, the Philippines, and South America, Sunday is the first day of the week. Sunday is the first day of the week according to the Hebrew calendar and traditional calendars, including Christian calendars, Quakers named Sunday the first day in accordance with their witness of simplicity. The name Sunday, which means Sunday, comes from Hellenistic astrology, in which each of the seven planets Known in English as Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, and the Moon, was assigned an hour of the day. And the planet that was regent during the first hour of any day of the week gave that day its name. The seven-day week was introduced into Rome from Egypt in the first and second centuries. And each consecutive day was given the Roman names of the planets. Sunang, literally Sun's Day, originated from Old English Sunang, about 700, and became the English noun Sunday. Sometime before 1250. Sunday was the day of the sun deity in Roman culture. The sun was the source of life in pagan mythology, providing people with warmth and illumination. It was the heart of a popular cult among Romans, who would pray early in the morning to catch the first rays of sunlight. Ezekiel 8 verse 16, And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and, behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. In the mid-second century, Justin Martyr reports memoirs of the apostles being read alongside writings of the Prophets on the day named that of the sun, Sunday. Sundays are to be observed as a day devoted to God's worship at church, attending Sunday school. A morning service of worship, and an evening service of worship, as well as a day of rest. According to First Day Sabbatarians, who include Christians of the Methodist, Baptist, and Reformed, Presbyterian and Congregationalist, traditions, meaning that people are free from servile labor and should refrain from trading, buying and selling except when necessary. Sunday begins on Saturday evening in the Roman Catholic Liturgy. Saturday evening Mass is liturgically a full Sunday Mass that fulfills the obligation of Sunday Mass attendance. And Saturday night Vespers, evening prayer, is liturgically first Vespers of the Sunday. The same evening excitement extends to other significant solemnities and feasts. Echoing the Jewish custom of beginning the new day at sunset. 
Those in the medical industry, law enforcement, and soldiers in a war zone are exempt from the customary Sunday church. Attendance Requirement If at all feasible, they are urged to integrate their job with religious services. A Saturday Sabbath is observed by some Christian denominations known as Seventh-day Sabbatarians. As did all of God's followers in the Old Testament, Christians in the Seventh-day Adventist, Seventh-day Baptist, and Church of God, Seventh-day, denominations, as well as many Messianic Jews, have kept the tradition of abstaining from work and meeting for worship on Saturdays, sunset to sunset. Most government offices in the United States and Canada are closed on Saturday and Sunday. The practice of government offices and some rural parts of the United States closing on Sunday is based on a system of blue laws. In the early days of the Puritans, blue laws were enacted that outlawed secular activities on Sunday's end were strictly enforced. Even in the 21st century, some public activities are still governed by these blue rules. Acts deemed superfluous and serious disturbances of the community's relaxation and religious liberty, such as trades, manufacturing, mechanical employment, horse racing and gaming, are prohibited in Oklahoma. According to the state statutes, other than essential meals and beverages, medicine, ice, and surgical supplies, public sales are permitted. On Sunday morning or evening, North American radio stations frequently play speciality radio programs such as Casey, Kasem's Countdown or other nationally syndicated radio shows that may depart from their typical weekly music routines. Except for the nationally broadcast Sunday night baseball duel, Major League Baseball normally schedules all Sunday games during the day. Certain traditionally religious locations such as Boston and Baltimore, will schedule games no earlier than 1.35 p.m. to allow individuals who attend religious services in the morning to arrive on time for the game. Professional American football in the National Football League is normally played on Sunday, while some professional games are played on Saturday through Saturday Night Football. Monday via Monday Night Football and Thursday by Thursday Night Football or Thanksgiving. High school football is usually played on Friday night or Saturday afternoon, whereas college football is usually played on Saturday. Monday is the day of the week between Sunday and Tuesday. It is the first day of the week. And it is the second day of the week in countries that follow the Sunday first arrangement. Monday gets its name from Old English Nanang and Middle English Monday, which is a translation of Latin dies luni which means day of the moon. The names of the days of the week were coined in Greek and Latin during the Roman era, with Monday's name being V, Dislay Day of the Moon. Sunday, Dies Solis, was the first day of the week in Greco-Roman times, while Monday, Dies Luni, was the second. In the liturgical calendar of the Catholic Church, Monday is still referred to as Feria Secunda. Monday was also referred to as second day by Quakers in the past. Families are urged to spend one evening per week, called family home evening, FHE, or family night, usually Monday. In study, prayer, and other family activities, according to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Many Latter-day Saint-owned businesses close early on Mondays, so that employees and customers can spend more time with their family. In Islam, Mondays are one of the days in a week in which Muslims are encouraged to do voluntary fasting. The other being Thursdays. There are a number of hadith which narrated of Prophet Muhammad fasting on these days. On Monday and Thursday mornings in Judaism, a little portion of the weekly Torah Parsha is read in public as a supplement to the Saturday reading. On Mondays, special penitential prayers are performed unless there is a happy occasion that precludes them. According to the Mishnah and Talmud, these customs arose from the fact that Monday and Thursday were market days, when people from the surrounding towns gathered in the city. 
following the scriptural reference to the Sabbath day as the seventh day, and the tradition of that day being on. Saturday, Monday is known in Hebrew as Yom Shein, which literally means second day. The phonetic and cultural link between Saturn, Saturday, and the Sabbath day has been proven to date back to ancient. Mesopotamia On Mondays, more people commit suicide in England and Wales than on other days of the week, more people. Call in sick across the country, and more people surf the web worldwide. Because Monday is the first day of the week, Tuesday is the second day. Sunday is the first day of the week. According to several regularly used calendars, especially in the United States. Hence Tuesday is the third day of the week. Saturday is the first day of the week in Islamic countries. While Tuesday is the fourth day of the week. The English name is derived from Old English Thai West and Middle English. Tuesday, which both mean TW's day, the Norse mythological day of TIW or TR, the deity of single fight law. And justice. In the Interpretatio Germanica, TIW was equated with Mars. And the day's name is a translation of the Latin dies martis. Tyr, pronounced TYZ in Old Norse, is a Germanic deity who is a valiant and powerful member of the gods and patron of warriors and mythological heroes. Most Latin references to the god are via the prism of the Interpretatio Romana, a which depicts the god as Mars, the ancient Roman war god. On a 3rd century Latin inscription, for example, the god may be referred to as Mars Thinxus, Latin Mars of the assembly thing, indicating a significant association with the Germanic thing, a legislative body among the ancient Germanic peoples. He is also known as TW in Old English and Zeu in Old High German. All of which are derived from the Proto-Germanic theonym asterisk twas, which means, the, God. The deity is the namesake of Tuesday, TR's day, in Germanic languages, including English. Thanks to the process of Interpretatio Germanica. While TR's etymological roots can be traced all the way back to Proto-Indo-European, there are few direct references to the God before the Old Norse period. TR, like many other non-Roman deities, is mentioned in Latin texts through the Interpretatio Romana procedure, which refers to the god through a presumed parallel in Roman mythology. TR is commonly referred to as Mars in Latin inscriptions and writings. Wednesday is the day between Tuesday and Thursday of the week. The fifth day of the week is Wednesday. Wednesday is the fourth day of the week in countries that use the Sunday First Convention and in the Jewish Hebrew calendar. The name is derived from Old English Dinesh in Middle English Wednesday, which mean Day of Woden in English. Referring to the religion of the Anglo-Saxons, who were the English equivalent of the Norse god Odin. The day's name is a calc of Dies Mercurii Day of Mercury in some other languages such as the French Mercredi or the Italian Merkeld. In Germanic mythology, Odin is a much-respected god. He is associated with wisdom, healing, death, monarchy, the gallows. Knowledge, war, battle, victory, sorcery, poetry, frenzy, and the runic alphabet, according to Norse mythology, which also presents him as the husband of the goddess Frigg. The god was known as Den in Old English. Uoden in Old Saxon, Woden in Old Dutch, Wida in Old Frisian, and Woden in Old High German. All of which were derived from the Proto-Germanic theonym asterisk wanas, which meant Lord of Fury or Leader of the Possessed. The modern English weekday name Wednesday derives from Old English Wadensdag, meaning Day of Woden. Cognate terms are found in other Germanic languages, such as Middle Low German and Middle Dutch Wodensdag, modern. Dutch Wonsdag, Old Frisian Wernesday, is almost equal to Werendii, and Old Norse Instager, CF Danish, Norwegian, Swedish Onstag. All of these terms derive from late Proto-Germanic asterisk Wudensdag, Day of Wudnaz. A calc of Latin Mercurii dies, Day of Mercury, CF Modern Italian Mercaliti, French Mercredi. Spanish Miracles. 
Thursday is the day of the week between Wednesday and Friday. The term Thursday is derived from Old English unrest and Middle English Thursday, with loss of n dash. Initially in Northern dialects, from Old Norse Orstiger. Thor, the Norse god of thunder, was given the name. The day is named after the Roman god Jupiter, who was the god of sky and thunder, in most Romance languages. Iovis dies. Or Jupiter's day, was the Latin name for the day. Iovis slash Jovis was the genitive or possessive case of Jupiter in Latin, and it became the name for Thursday in most Romance languages. Most Germanic languages named the day after the Roman god Jupiter, who was linked with Thuner, Norse Thor in Northern Europe. The Torah is read aloud in public on Thursday mornings in Judaism. And extra penitential prayers are offered on Thursdays unless there is a special occasion for happiness that cancels them. Thor is a hammer-wielding god who is connected with thunder, lightning, storms, holy groves, and trees, power. Mankind's protection, hallowing, and fertility. Thursday is derived from the Old English word unrest, which means day of honor. The hammer or lightning of Thor has been identified as the swastika symbol. Women use the hammer as a protective symbol, as evidenced by the fact that it has been discovered in women's graves. It appears that the warrior, in the form of the swastika, employed it as well. It appears to have mostly had associations with light and fire, as well as being tied to the sun wheel. This sign, which is seen on memorial stones in Scandinavia alongside inscriptions to Thor, may have been adopted as an alternative to the hammer because of Thor's link with lightning. When we locate it on the pommel of a warrior's sword and on his sword belt, we assume he was putting himself under the protection of the thunder god. Friday is the day of the week between Thursday and Saturday. In Israel, Friday is the sixth day of the week. Friday is derived from the Old English Fred, which means day of Frigg. As a result of an old custom linking the Germanic goddess Frigg with the Roman goddess Venus, with whom the day is connected in many cultures, in both biblical and modern Hebrew. Friday is Yom Shershir meaning the sixth day. On Fridays, Roman Catholics were traditionally required to abstain from eating meat from warm-blooded animals. However, fish was permitted. In 1962, Lou Groan, a McDonald's franchise owner in Cincinnati, Ohio, created the filet fish in reaction to declining hamburger sales on Fridays due to the Roman Catholic practice of abstaining from meat on Fridays. Jewish Sabbath begins at sunset on Friday and lasts until nightfall on Saturday. There is a Jewish custom to fast on the Friday of the week of Chukat. In Germanic mythology, Frigg, slash fr slash, Old Norse, Friday, is a goddess. She is related with marriage, prophecy, clairvoyance, and maternity in Norse mythology, which is the source of most surviving knowledge about her and dwells in the swamp halls of Fenseler. Her name is reflected in the English daily name Friday, which means Frigg's day. Frigg continued to be mentioned in Scandinavian folklore after Christianization. Frigg has appeared in popular culture, has been the subject of art, and is revered in Germanic neopaganism in modern times. Saturday is the day between Friday and Sunday in the week. According to Vettius Valens, the Romans named Saturday Sterni Dis, Saturn's Day, no later than the second century after the planet Saturn, which governed the first hour of the day. The seventh day of the week, known as Shabbat, or Sabbath for Seventh-day Adventists, is a day of rest for Jews, Messianics, Seventh-day Baptists, and Seventh-day Adventists. It runs from sundown Friday until sundown Saturday. Saturday, Sabbath, and the Lord's Day are distinct in the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox faiths, Sunday. According to the Fourth Commandment, Exodus 20 verse 8, the Lord's Day is the Sabbath, not Sunday. According to other Protestant sects, such as Seventh-day Adventists, 
The Julian calendar was a revision of the Roman calendar suggested by Julius Caesar in AUC 708, 46 BC. By edict, it went into force on January 1st, AUC 709, 45 BC. It was created with the help of Greek astronomers and mathematicians, such as Sausagenes of Alexandria. For more than 1,600 years, the Julian calendar was the dominant calendar in the Roman Empire and, later, most of the Western world, until 1582, when Pope Gregory XIII issued a minor revision that reduced the average length of the year from 365.25 days to 365.2425 days, correcting the Julian calendar's drift against the solar year. This revised calendar, which became known as the Gregorian calendar, was adopted worldwide throughout the next centuries, first in Catholic countries, and then in Protestant countries in the Western Christian world. The Julian calendar is still used in parts of the Eastern Orthodox Church and in parts of Oriental Orthodoxy as well as by the Berbers. Months were later renamed after Julius Caesar and Augustus, with Quintilus being renamed Aelius July in 44 BC and Sextilus being renamed Augustus August in 8 BC. Because it was Caesar's birthday month, Quintilus was dubbed in his honor. Sextilis was renamed in honor of Augustus. According to a Senatus Consultum recounted by Macrobius, since several of the most crucial events in his ascent to power, culminating in the fall of Alexandria, occurred in that month. These names were in use until the 15th century, more than 700 years after his reign. Onth, Aranmanoth, Reaping Month, Holy Month and were used as conventional month names until the late 18th century, with significant alterations. From January to December, the names were Wintermanoth, Winter Month, Hornung, Note 3, Lentsinmanoth, Spring Month, Lent Month, Astarmanoth, Easter Month, One Manoth, Joy Month, a corruption of Winimanoth, Pasture Month, Brechmanoth, Fallow Month, Huimanoth, Hay Month, Aranmanoth, Reaping Month, Holy Month. Other emperors renamed months, but it appears that none of the latter alterations survived their deaths. Caligula renamed September Germanicus in honor of his father in AD 37, Nero renamed April Neronius, May Claudius, and June Germanicus in AD 65, and Domitian renamed September Germanicus and October Domitianus in AD 84. Amazonius, Invictus, Felix, Pius, Lucius, Elias, Aurelius, Commodus, Augustus, Herculius, Romanus, and Exuperatorius were all renamed after Commodus' assumed names from January through December. Tacitus The Roman emperor is supposed to have commanded that September, the month of his birth and ascension, be renamed after him, but this is a stretch given that he did not become emperor until November 275. The Jewish calendar is a lunisolar calendar that is still used today for Jewish religious observance and as the official calendar of Israel. Among other things, it defines the dates for Jewish holidays and the appropriate public reading of Torah sections, Yarzites, dates to memorialize the death of a relative, and daily psalm readings. It is used for religious purposes in Israel, as well as providing a time frame for agriculture and serving as an Official civil holiday calendar alongside the Gregorian calendar. The Babylonian calendar has been widely used by countries in Western Asia since ancient times. The system, which was also utilized by the Israelites, was based on lunar months with the intercalation of an extra month to bring. The cycle closer to the solar cycle, despite the fact that the Hebrew Bible makes no reference of this extra month. Ten of the twelve months in the pre-exilic calendar are referred to in the Bible by number rather than name. Only four months' names are mentioned in the Tanakh prior to the Babylonian captivity, Aviv, first month, literally. Spring, Ziv, second month, literally light, Ethanim, seventh month, literally strong and plural. Perhaps referring to strong rains and bull, eighth month. The Jewish people acquired Babylonian names for the months during their Babylonian captivity. 
The Sumerian calendar was the direct ancestor of the Babylonian calendar. These Babylonian month names, such as Nisan, Er, Tammuz, Ab, Elul, Tishri, and Adar, are shared with the present Syrian and Assyrian calendars, indicating a common origin. A day in the rabbinic Hebrew calendar extends from sunset, the start of the evening, until the next sunset. According to the classic rabbinic interpretation of Genesis 1 verse 5, there was evening, and there was dawn, one day. The biblical meaning of Yom Kippur is found in Leviticus 23 verse 32, where it is said that the holiday lasts from nightfall to evening. Nightfall, Seth HaKachabim, which happens some time after sunset, usually 42 to 72 minutes. End center is 7 degrees below the geometric, airless, horizon, which is slightly later than civil twilight. Marks the end of Shabbat and other Jewish holidays. Nightfall occurs when three medium-sized stars become visible, which is 6 degrees. After sunset, according to Maimonides, this had grown to three second magnitude stars by the 17th century. The contemporary definition is when the sun's center is 7 degrees below the geometric, airless, horizon, which is slightly later than civil twilight, which is 6 degrees. The Hebrew week, Shavua, is a seven-day cycle that corresponds to the seven-day time in Genesis when the world is formed. The weekdays begin with Sunday, day 1, or Yom Rishon, and end with Shabbat on Saturday, day 7. Because division is used in some calculations, a remainder of zero denotes Saturday. Names of weekdays, numbers, Yom Risho, first day, Yom Shani, second day, Yom Shlishi, third day, Yom Revai, fourth day. Yom Hamashi, fifth day, Yom Shershur, sixth day, Yom Shabbat, Sabbath day. The names of the days of the week are modeled on the seven days mentioned in the creation story. For example, Genesis 1 verse 8 says, And there was evening, and there was morning, a second day, which is Yom Shani, which means second day. However, the current names for days 1, 6, and 7 deviate slightly from the Genesis version. From 1 Adar, or Adar 2 in leap years, through 29 Marchishvan, all of the biblical feasts are celebrated Pasach. Shavuot, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, and Shemini Atzeret. This is a set period during which no changes are done. In Hebrew, Aviv means barley ripening and, by extension, spring season. As in Tel Aviv. It is also used as a given name, surname, and place name. The Pentateuch refers to the first month of the year as the month of Aviv. In the Book of Esther, as well as following post-exilic history up to the present day, the month is referred to as Nisan. Although Aviv refers to the three-month season and Nisan is known as the first month of Aviv, the two titles are frequently used interchangeably. Aviv, or the month of the Aviv, is the biblical lunar new year in the Hebrew calendar when the barley has reached or past this stage, Exodus 13 verse 4, 2315. 12 Rosh Hashanah, Tractate 2a, which is the Jewish religious new year. The civil Babylonian year began with Tishri, the seventh month, which is the worldwide new year and day of judgment according to Rabbinic Judaism. Aviv begins at the time of the northern spring equinox, March 21st. This month has been known as Nisan since the Babylonian captivity, Nehemiah 2 verse 1, Esther 3 verse 7. When the temple in Jerusalem was still standing, the harvest was started by gathering a sheaf of barley, which was offered as a sacrifice to God, Lev 23 colon 4, 11, on the day after the Shabbat, the 16th of the month of Nisan. According to the rabbis, and the first Sunday of Passover according to the Karaites. In modern Hebrew, Aviv also refers to spring, one of the four seasons. As a result, Tel Aviv, the largest modern Israeli city, meaning Spring Hill, since Passover is always observed on the 15th to 21st of Nisan, or 22nd outside Israel, Nisan is known as the holiday of Aviv. 
The 14th of Nisan is always Pesach or Passover. The first day of Chag HaMatzah, or the Unleavened Bread Feast, is always the 15th of Nisan after that. On the Hebrew calendar, Iyar is the eighth month of the civil year, which begins on 1 Tishri and the second month of the Jewish religious year, which begins on 1 Nisan. The name has Babylonian roots. It's a month with 29 days in it. On the Gregorian calendar, Iyar normally occurs in April-May, before the Babylonian captivity. The month was known as Ziv in the Hebrew Bible, 1 Kings 6:1, 6, 637. The Hebrew word Ziv literally means light or glow. During the Babylonian captivity, Iyar was adopted along with all other post-biblical Jewish month names. Era Aryu, which means month of flowering in Babylonian, was the name given to it in the Babylonian calendar. Tishri or Tishri is the first month of the civil year, starting on 1 Tishri and the seventh month of the ecclesiastical year, beginning on 1 Nisan in the Hebrew calendar. The month's name is Babylonian. It is a 30 day month. On the Gregorian calendar, Tishri falls between September and October. Before the Babylonian exile, the Hebrew Bible refers to the month as Ethanim, Hebrew, 1 Kings 8 verse 2. The month is known as Era Tiridim in the Babylonian calendar, which means month of beginning, of the second half year. On the Hebrew calendar, Marchishman, literally, eighth month, is the second month of the civil year, which begins on 1. Tishri and the eighth month of the ecclesiastical year, which begins on 1 Nisan. Marchishman has 29 days in a regular Kesedron, year, however due to Rosh Hashanah postponement restrictions. An extra day is added to Marchishman in some years to make the year a full Malay year. Marchishman is a Gregorian calendar month that falls between October and November. Before the Babylonian exile, the Hebrew Bible referred to the month as Bull, 1 Kings 6 verse 38. Bull is also mentioned on the sarcophagus of Eshmunazer II, which dates from the early 5th century BC and is found at Sidon. Instead of names, the biblical Hebrew months were given enumerations. The new moon of Aviv, which literally means barley ripening and, by extension, spring season in Hebrew, Exodus 9 verse 31, is one of the few that is called both by name and by number, the first. Nisan Nisan is the month of barley maturing in the first month of spring in the Hebrew and Babylonian calendars. It is the first month of the ecclesiastical year in the Hebrew calendar. Known as the first of the months of the year, Book of Exodus 12 verses 1 to 2, first month, X 12 14. And the month of Aviv, X 13 colon 4. The Tanakh's Book of Esther refers to it as Nisan. While the Talmud refers to it as Rosh Hashanah, the new year, for kings and pilgrimages. It is a 30-day month. Nisan is a lunar month that falls between March and April on the Gregorian calendar. On the Hebrew calendar, Sivan is the ninth month of the civil year and the third month of the ecclesiastical year from Akkadian Simnu, meaning season, time. It is a 30-day month. Sivan is a lunar month that falls between May and June on the Gregorian calendar. During the Babylonian captivity, Sivan was adopted along with all other post-biblical Jewish month names. It was known as Era Simanu in the Babylonian calendar. On the Hebrew calendar and the current Assyrian calendar, Tammuz, Hebrew. Tams is the tenth month of the civil year and the fourth month of the ecclesiastical year. It is a 29-day month that falls between June and July on the Gregorian calendar. The month's name was derived from the Assyrian and Babylonian month era Demuzu, which was named after the Mesopotamian god Demuzid. In Iraq, the Levant, and Turkey, the month of July is known as Tams, Arabic. Tammuz in Turkish. In Syriac, the word is 
The 2006 Lebanon War is known as Arb Tams, i.e. the July War, in Lebanon, Syria, and the Palestinian territories, following the Arab tradition of naming Arab-Israeli wars after months or years. On the Hebrew calendar, AV is the 11th month of the civil year and the 5th month of the ecclesiastical year from Akkadian of Father. The name derives from the Babylonian calendar's era Abu, which means month of Abu. The name originally appears in literature from the Second Temple period, such as Megalat Tanit. It is one of several months in the Hebrew Bible that are not expressly identified Tanik. It is a 30-day month. On the Gregorian calendar, AV generally occurs in July-August. On the Hebrew calendar, Elul is the twelfth month of the Jewish civil year and the sixth month of the ecclesiastical year. It's a month with 29 days in it. Elul falls between the months of August and September on the Gregorian calendar. Elul's name, like the names of the other Hebrew calendar months, comes from the Akkadian word for harvest which was brought from Babylonia during the Babylonian captivity. In Akkadian, a month named Elu was employed in a similar fashion. Era Ulu or Harvest Month is the name given to the month. Elul is a month of repentance in Jewish tradition, leading up to the high holy days of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The origin of the Aramaic verb search is related to the word Elul. According to Jewish texts dating back to the 14th century, the Hebrew word Elul is an acronym for the phrase Ani Lodiv Dodili, I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. Elul is a time to explore one's heart and draw closer to God in preparation for Rosh Hashanah, the Day of Judgment, and Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. There are a number of particular rites that take place during the month of Elul leading up to the High Holy Days. From Rosh Hodesh Elul, the first day of the month, until the day before Rosh Hashanah. It is customary to blast the shofar every morning, save on Shabbat. The blasts are intended to reawaken one's spirits and urge him to begin soul-searching in preparation for the high. Holy Days Elul is the time to begin the often painful process of granting and asking forgiveness as part of this. Preparation from Rosh Hodesh Elul through Hosanna Rabbah on Sukkot. It is also customary to recite Psalm 27 every day in Tishri'i. On the Hebrew calendar, Kislev or Chislev, also known as Chislu in the King James, approved English, Bible, is the third civil month and the ninth ecclesiastical month. It was known as Era Kislimu in the Babylonian calendar. Kislev is a Jewish month that falls between November and December on the Gregorian calendar. It is also known as the month of dreams. On the Hebrew calendar, Tevet is the fourth month of the civil year and the tenth month of the ecclesiastical year. It comes after Kislev and before Shavat. It's a month with 29 days in it. Tevet falls between the months of December and January on the Gregorian calendar. It was known as Era Ebtim in the Babylonian calendar, which meant muddy month. The Gregorian New Year's Day, January 1st, nearly always occurs in this month. Only rarely will it occur in either of the two neighboring months, Kislev or Shabbat. On the Hebrew calendar, Shabbat is the fifth month of the civil year, beginning in Tishr or Tishri and the eleventh month of the ecclesiastical year, beginning in Nisan. It is a 30-day month. Shabbat falls between the months of January and February on the Gregorian calendar. During the Babylonian captivity, the month's name was derived from the Akkadian language. The month's alleged Akkadian origin is Abtu, which means strike and refers to the season's severe rains. The month is originally recognized by this name in Jewish sources in the Bible book of prophet Zechariah, Zechariah 1. On the Hebrew calendar, Adar is the sixth month of the civil year and the twelfth month of the ecclesiastical year, roughly equal to March in the Gregorian calendar. It's a month with 29 days in it. During the Babylonian captivity, 
The month's name, like all the others from the Hebrew calendar, was adopted. Era Adaru or ADR, month of Adar, was the Babylonian name for this month. It is preceded by a 30-day intercalary month known as Adar Aleph, Hebrew. Aleph being the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, also known as Adar Rishon, first Adar, or Adar Ayan Leap. Years, and it is then known as Adar Bet, Hebrew, Bet being the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Also known as Adar Shani in leap years, second Adar or Adar 2. Adar and V Adar are often used instead of Adar I and Adar 2, V signifies, and, so an Adar. On the Gregorian calendar, Adar I and 2 fall in February and March. Passover, also known as Pesach, is a prominent Jewish holiday commemorating the Israelites' liberation from Egyptian slavery. It is observed on the 15th day of the Hebrew month of Nisan, the first month of Aviv, or spring. The 15th day of the month of Nisan, which falls in March or April on the Gregorian calendar, is when the Passover begins. After the 14th day, the 15th day begins in the evening, and the Seder dinner is eaten that evening. Because Passover is a spring feast, it usually begins on the night of a full moon following the northern vernal. Equinox on the 15th of Nisan. Passover sometimes begins on the second full moon following the vernal equinox. Like in 2016, due to leap months falling after the vernal equinox. To ensure that Passover did not begin before spring, ancient Israel's tradition was that the Lunar New Year, the first day of Nisan, would not begin until the barley was mature, which served as a test for the arrival of spring. An intercalary month, Adar II, would be added if the barley was not ready or if various other events indicated that spring was not yet upon us. The intercalation, on the other hand, has been fixed mathematically according to the metonic cycle since at least the 4th century. In Israel, Passover is a seven-day festival commemorating the Feast of Unleavened Bread with the first and last days designated as legal holidays and holy days, with holiday feasts, special prayer services, and work prohibitions, the days in between are known as Kol Hamod, weekdays, of, the festival. The festival is observed for eight days by Jews living outside of Israel. The holiday is traditionally observed for seven days by Reform and Reconstructionist Jews. Shavuot, also known as the Feast of Weeks in English, is a Jewish holiday celebrated on the sixth day of the Hebrew month of Sivan, it may fall between May 15th and June 14th on the Gregorian calendar. Shavuot, according to the Bible, was the first day of the wheat harvest in Israel, Exodus 34 verse 22. Furthermore, Orthodox rabbinic traditions teach that the date also commemorates the revelation of the Torah to Moses and the Israelites at Mount Sinai, which occurred on this date in 1314 BC, according to Orthodox Jewish tradition. While it is frequently referred regarded as Pentecost, in Koine Greek, oh, because of its proximity to Passover and because Pentecost means 50 in Greek, Shavuot is not the same as Christian Pentecost which comes 50 days after the first day of Passover. The season of the grain harvest, notably wheat harvest, in the land of Israel, is textually linked to the Feast of Shavuot in the Bible. The grain harvest in ancient times lasted seven weeks and was a joyous period, Jeremiah 5 verse 24, D-E-U-T. 16 colon 9, 11, Isaiah 9 verse 2. It began with the barley harvesting at Passover and ended with the wheat harvesting at Shavuot. Shavuot was thus the grain harvest's final holiday, much as the eighth day of Sukkot, Tabernacles, was the fruit. Harvest's final festival. On Shavuot, when the temple in Jerusalem was still standing, an offering of two loaves of wheat harvest bread was made. The Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, literally means head of the year. Yom Teruah. YMTR is the biblical name for this holiday, which means day of screaming or blasting. It is the first of the Jewish high holy days, YMMNRM, days of awe. 
which fall in the late summer slash early autumn of the northern hemisphere, according to Leviticus 23 verses 23 to 25. Both Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are included in the High Holy Days. Rosh Hashanah is a two-day Jewish holiday that begins on the first day of Tishri'i, the seventh month of the liturgical calendar. In contrast to the ecclesiastical Lunar New Year on the first day of the first month Nisan, the spring Passover month that commemorates Israel's exodus from Egypt. Rosh Hashanah is the traditional anniversary of the creation of Adam and Eve, the first man and woman according to the Hebrew Bible, as well as the initiation of humanity's role in God's world. According to Judaism's teachings, Rosh Hashanah is a one-day celebration according to the Torah. And because days in the Hebrew calendar begin at nightfall, Rosh Hashanah begins at sundown at the end of 29 Elul. Because it is impossible to determine the date of the new moon. Customary Jewish law appears to be that Rosh Hashanah is to be celebrated for two days since the destruction of the Second Temple of Jerusalem in 70 CE and the time of Rabbi Yohanan ben Zakkai. Nonetheless, as late as the 13th century CE, there is evidence that Rosh Hashanah was observed on a single day in Israel. The date of Rosh Hashanah was originally chosen by observing the new moon, Molad, and could thus fall on any day of the week. The Hebrew calendar was established around the 3rd century CE, so that the first day of Rosh Hashanah never falls on a Sunday, Wednesday, or Friday. Rosh Hashanah occurs 163 days after the first day of Passover and is consequently decided by the new moon closest to the fall equinox in most cases, though not always. In Judaism, Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement, is the holiest day of the year. Atonement and repentance are major topics. This holy day is usually marked with a day-long fast, confession an intense prayer with the majority of the day spent in synagogue services. Both Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are included in the High Holy Days. Tenth Day of Tishri'i Sukkot is a Torah-commanded holiday that begins on the 15th of Tishri'i and lasts for seven days. It is one of the three pilgrimage festivals, Hebrew, Shalash Regalim during which those Israelites who could make the journey to Jerusalem's temple were commanded to do so. The Torah uses the terms Chag Ha'asif, which means Harvest Festival or Festival of Ingathering, and Chag Ha'asukot, which means Festival of Booths. This corresponds to the double significance of Sukkot. The one mentioned in the Book of Exodus is Agricultural Inn. Nature Festival of Ingathering at the Year's End, Exodus 34 verse 22, and marks the end of the harvest time, and thus of the agricultural year in the land of Israel. The more elaborate religious significance from the book of Leviticus is that of commemorating the Exodus and the dependence of the people of Israel on the will of God, Leviticus 23 verses 42 to 43. 15 Tishri'i, 16 Tishri'i, 17 Tishri'i, 18 Tishri'i, 19 Tishri'i, 20 Tishri'i, 21 Tishri'i. Purim Purim, Lots, is derived from the term Pur, which in the Book of Esther is rendered as Lot. Purim is observed on the 14th day of the Hebrew month of Adar, and on Adar II in Hebrew leap years, which occur every two to three years, the day following the Jews' victory over their foes. According to the Hebrew calendar, Purim was celebrated on the 15th of Adar in cities that were secured by a surrounding wall at the time of Joshua. On what is known as Shushan Purim, because battle in the walled city of Shushan persisted until the 14th day of Adar. On the 15th of Adar, only Jerusalem and a few other cities celebrate Purim today. Because it did not precisely reflect the duration of a year on earth, the Julian calendar was discontinued. The Gregorian calendar of today performs better, but is there such a thing as a perfect calendar? The time it takes our planet to complete a full circle around the sun determines the duration of a year on Earth. Solar calendar systems, such as the Gregorian calendar, are designed to correctly reflect the length of a tropical 
year, also known as a solar year, astronomical year, or equinoctial year. This is the time it takes to complete a full seasonal cycle, such as from one equinox to the next. The average length of a tropical year is 365.242189 days, though this varies significantly throughout time. Because the Gregorian calendar contains 365 days, a leap day is added every four years to bring it in line with the tropical year. Without leap days, our calendar would be off by one day every four years, forcing the astrological seasons to begin later and later as time passes. The March equinox will fall in April in less than 50 years, and the June solstice will fall in July. Is there such a thing as a perfect calendar? The answer is simple, no. None of the current calendar systems in use around the world accurately represent the duration of a tropical year. There are, however, calendar systems that are more accurate than the current Gregorian calendar. A leap day is added to the Julian calendar every four years without fail, making an average Julian year 365.25 days long. The gap between the tropical and Julian years is approximately 11 minutes per year, resulting in a 128-year inaccuracy of one day. The Julian calendar was finally supplanted by the Gregorian calendar due to its unreliability. The Gregorian calendar of today has more complex leap year regulations, making it significantly more precise. However, it is not without flaws. It is 27 seconds longer than the tropical year. Therefore it is wrong by one day every 3,236 years. The yearly calendar of feasts in the Bible is based on agriculture, and Israel was an agricultural society. The feasts are also based on agriculture. Those spiritually referred to as firstfruits are the ones who receive salvation. They will be the first to be resurrected in a harvest of faithful servants for his impending kingdom. Revelation 14 verse 4 says, These were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto Elohim and the Lamb. The biblical calendar's significance of firstfruits cannot be overstated. Revelation 14 verse 4 These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. Abib, which refers to the first green grains of maturing, firstfruits barley, is the first of seven annual feasts. It is referred to as the Abib, Ha Abib, in the Hebrew scriptures, which is a precise phrase for a certain stage of barley growth. Deuteronomy 16 verse 1 says that Israel kept the Passover soon before leaving Egypt in the new year month of Abib. Exodus 12 verse 2 says that the first month of Abib, the month of green barley ears, determines all the annual feasts. We need to discover the maturing first fruits of barley grain to establish Abib as the first month. This lovely harvest calendar teaches the importance of unwavering obedience and trusting in Lord's kindness and Blessings rather than predetermined, calculated dates for personal convenience. Most likely, the calendar you're looking at is the Gregorian calendar, which was named after Pope Gregory XIII, who modified the earlier Julian calendar in 1582 to better synchronize it with the spring season. Gregory created leap year rules, which add an extra day to the month of February. In almost 3,300 years, his regulations have kept this calendar aligned with the solar year to within one day. Other calendars are still in use today. For those who celebrate biblical feast days, two of these are particularly significant. The Bible, which does not utilize the Gregorian calendar, specifies when days of the year the feasts are to be commemorated. It is difficult to keep the feast days on the correct days of the year without a Bible-based calendar. And the Bible emphasizes the importance of having the correct days for proper worship. Other calendars are still in use today. For those who celebrate biblical feast days, 
Two of these are particularly significant. The Bible, which does not utilize the Gregorian calendar, specifies when days of the year the feasts are to be commemorated. It is difficult to keep the feast days on the correct days of the year without a Bible-based calendar. And the Bible emphasizes the importance of having the correct days for proper worship. The genuine biblical calendar is one of the easiest to grasp of all calendars. And it is the one that true worshipers use today to observe biblical days. Its structure is so reasonable that any rational individual may readily understand it. It doesn't require any complex computations or arbitrary rules to keep it in sync with the seasons. It is a lunisolar calendar, which implies that both the moon and the sun are taken into account when constructing it. The guidelines for that structure are totally from the Bible. And they are so simple that anyone should be able to grasp and explain them after reading them for themselves. God's people would be unable to obey Him unless they had a clear comprehension of His scriptural calendar. God ordered His people to gather at specific times of the year to commemorate His feast days. But He didn't say April or October or any of the other months on the Gregorian calendar. To pinpoint feast day observances, He utilized phrases like the tenth day of the first month and the first day of the seventh month. Calendars keep track of the days of the year, usually in a manner that divides them into months and weeks, not all. Calendars use seven-day weeks, incidentally. The four time elements of a basic calendar are day, week, month, and year. The day is the most important of these elements. What factors does God consider when determining the length of a day? Genesis 1 verses 1 to 5 In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. One day is made up of one evening and one morning. Why did Jehovah begin his day at the tail end? We've grown accustomed to starting our days at midnight and consider it irrational to do it at any other hour. What could be more irrational than waking up at 12 a.m.? Isn't that a strange coincidence? The evening and the morning were the first day, according to the Bible. Scripture reminds us that days begin and end at sunset in various places, including the first half of Genesis. Evening is a metaphor for night, whereas morning in Hebrew implies daylight. How many of these days will we be able to thread together into a week? So, why do we divide seven days into seven days and call them a week? The Hebrew term Shabuah, which means completeness or perfection, is rendered as week. Early in Genesis, 2 colon 3. We are also introduced to the week, and God blessed the seventh day. And sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. The Hebrew root word Shabbat, Strong's Concordance number 7673, the Sabbath, is translated resting here. The Bible makes it plain that Yahweh employs a seven-day week, Leviticus 23 verse 15. The moon begins as a very thin crescent on one side, grows fuller and brighter, and then recedes to a very thin crescent on the other side over time. Then it vanishes for a little time before repeating similar phases. When you count the number of days from one point to the next, you'll see that the moon's cycle takes roughly 2,912 days to complete. But when do you start counting the moon cycles? Observing the moon also reveals something interesting. It takes 14 days from the time you can barely see the young crescent until the moon is at its brightest, full moon. Each quarter, first, second, third, and fourth, is made up of seven days. You decide this is useful by staring intently at the moon. You can count days in a bundle of seven. Surprise! That's how God created it. 
Does Jehovah include months in his calendar? There are many scriptural allusions, as there are with weeks. But three are sufficient, beginning with Deuteronomy 16 verse 1, Observe the month of Abib. And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God, for in the month of Abib the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt. By night. He not only creates months, but he also begins them with the new moon sighting. Look for the new moon of Abib. And keep the Passover. States the text. The Passover is observed on the 14th of Abib, X. 12 colon 6 and ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Psalm 104 verse 19, and Psalm 81 verse 3 He appointed the moon for seasons, the sun knoweth his going down. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed, on our solemn feast day. Isaiah 66 verse 23, and it shall come to pass, that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another. Shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. This may be of no consequence to you, after all, why should it matter whether spring arrives in the first, second, or third month? The Lord, on the other hand, is concerned. This month, Abib, shall be unto you the beginning of months, it shall be the first month of the year, God told Moses in Exodus 12 verse 2. This month's Hebrew name is Abib, which means green ears of grain. It is the month when green grain ears develop. Which grain though? Turn to Exodus 9, where we learn about one of God's plagues on Pharaoh. Exodus 9 verses 31 to 32 And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was bald. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. The grain Abib alludes to is barley, which is the only crop that is already in the ear and Abib. The green ears of barley month is the month in which the first Passover took place. The month of Abib is intimately linked to the status of barley. That month cannot be Abib if the barley is not in the proper stage. Leviticus 23 verse 14 And ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your God, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. The Israelites were not allowed to harvest their barley harvests until the priest waved the first fruit sheaf before God. Barley is planted in November and matures in around four months. During the first month, it must be in the green ear stage, with at least some of it ready for harvest by the time of the Feast of Unleavened. Bread's Wave Sheaf Offering Because these lines describe how to count forward from the wave sheaf to the Feast of Weeks, we know it happens during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. By having us see the maturing barley. He keeps the seasons in sync with the months. The Temple Festivals of Shavuot, Feast of Weeks, or First Fruits in Early Summer, the Month of Summer Fruit in Line. 8. And the Feast of Ingathering, the Harvest, in the Fall, which culminates in the Feast of Tabernacles. Demonstrate the fundamental importance of the agricultural cycle in King Solomon's Day. Dining is mentioned because feasting was a part of the pilgrimage festivities. Days begin and terminate at sunset, Genesis 1 verse 5. Weeks begin on the first day and terminate on the seventh day. The Sabbath, Leviticus 23 verses 15 to 16. The appearance of the new moon marks the beginning of each month, Deuteronomy 16 verse 1. Beginning in the month, barley will be ready to harvest by the middle of that month, Leviticus 23 verses 4 to 14. In addition to Tishri, Cheshvan, Kislev, Tevat, Shavat, Adar, Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, and Elul. There are also other months. Adar II, also known as Adar Shani or Vedar, replaces Adar in leap years. And Adar I, also known as Adar Rishan, is inserted before Adar II in leap years. There are either 29 or 30 days in a month. We are in year 5871 of the Jewish calendar, September 19th, 2020, September 6th, 2021, 
and in September the calendar will enter year 5872, September 6, 2021 to May 19, 2022. Although Nissan occurs six or seven months after the start of the calendar year, it is considered the first month. At the Hashanah, apples and honey are served. On one Tishri or Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year begins. The cycle of Sabbaths and holidays that are regularly observed by the Jewish religious community and officially in Israel by the Jewish secular society, as well as known as the Jewish Religious Year. The Sabbath and Jewish festivals follow the Jewish calendar, recur at regular intervals, and are observed at home and in synagogues according to Jewish law and custom. The Sabbath, for example, commemorates the creation, while Passover commemorates the 3,000-year-old exodus from Egypt. Through Sabbath and holiday observances, the past is not only remembered, but also relived. On the Sabbath, Creative physical activity ceases, just as it did when the creation was completed. According to Genesis, during the Sukkot festival, Jews leave their homes and live in booths, just as their biblical forefathers did. Furthermore, every age considers Sabbath and festival themes to be eternally significant, repeating, and refreshed. As a result, the revelation of the Torah, divine teaching or law, at Sinai which is honored on Shavuot, is seen as a continuous process that occurs whenever a commitment to Torah study is made. Sanctification is a fundamental part of Sabbath and festival observance. The Jews hallowed the Sabbath and festivals more than the Sabbath and festivals sanctified the Jews. Joy and relaxation became religious obligations, and mundane meals became hallowed meals, mitzvot. The Sabbath and festivals also make a substantial contribution to communal awareness. Thus, if there are less than 10 male Jews present in the synagogue, neither the Sabbath nor the holiday can be properly kept according to old tradition. On Rosh Hashanah, a Jew prays for his own fate as well as the fate of all Jews, and on Tisha B.A.V., he mourns for the fate of all Jews. The sense of community established by Sabbath and holiday observances has served the Jews well throughout their long and often difficult history. The Jewish calendar, Sabbath, and festivals are responsible for the seven-day week, the concept of a weekly day of rest, and numerous Christian and Islamic holiday observances. The Jewish calendar's origins are no longer known with certainty. Some researchers believe that a solar year was used in ancient Israel. But no conclusive evidence has been shown, and it is more likely that a lunisolar calendar similar to that used in ancient Babylonia was used. Calendrical matters were governed by the Sanhedrin, or Council of Elders. In Jerusalem during the late Second Temple period, i.e., 1st century BCE to 70 CE, to proclaim a new month. Two witnesses who had seen the new moon were usually necessary to testify. The Nasi, or president, of the Sanhedrin approved leap years, which were declared by a council of three or more rabbis. Calendrical matters were decided by the Palestinian Patriarchate after the Sanhedrin's demise, the official heads of the Jewish community under Roman rule. Constantius II's reign 337 to 361, persecution of Jews. Combined with developments in astronomical science, led to the progressive replacement of observation with calculation. Hillel II, a Palestinian patriarch, instituted a regular and continuous calendar in 359 CE. According to Hai Ben Sharira, died 1038, the dean of a renowned Talmudic university in Babylonia. Maimonides, the famous medieval philosopher and jurist, summarizes the rules guiding the current calendar in chapters 6 to 10 of his Code, Sanctification of the New Moon. The Jewish Sabbath, from Hebrew Shavat, to rest, is kept on the seventh day of the week, Saturday, throughout the year. It commemorates the original seventh day, when God rested after finishing the creation. According to biblical tradition, Scholars have been unable to determine the origins of the seven-day week or the Sabbath. 
A seven-day week conflicts with both the solar and lunar calendars. Some experts believe the seven-day week and the Sabbath had a Babylonian origin, using the Akkadian term Shapatu. But, unlike the Jewish Sabbath, Shapatu refers to the day of the full moon and is never described as a day of rest. The idea of the Sabbath as a hallowed day of rest, connecting God to his people and occurring every seventh day, appears to have been unique to ancient Israel. Matthew 28 verse 1 In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. Mark 16 verse 2 And very early in the morning the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Mark 16 verse 9 Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Luke 24 verse 1 Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. John 20 verse 1 The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. John 20 verse 19 Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Acts 20 verse 7 And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 2 Upon the first day of the week let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him. That there be no gatherings when I come. John Wesley, at the rising of the sun they set out while it was yet dark, and came within sight of the sepulcher. For the first time, just as it grew light enough to discern that the stone was rolled away, MT 28 colon 1, Lou 24 colon 1, John 20 verse 1. Christian theology and practice should be wholly based on the Bible. According to the Reformation tenet of Sola Scriptura, we should expect confirmation from God's Word if Sunday is to be a day of Christian worship. The days were named after the planets of Hellenistic astrology in the order Sun, Moon, Mars, Aries, Mercury, Hermes, Jupiter, Zeus, Venus, Aphrodite, and Saturn, Kronos. Between the 1st and 3rd centuries AD, the Roman Empire gradually replaced the 8-day Roman nundinal cycle with the 7-day week, marking Sunday, the first day of the week. With the evidence I produced for you, which calendar would God had used? 1. Catholic Pope 2. Roman Ruler 3. Jewish. The Catholic view of the Bible and or tradition. Catholics, on the other hand, recognize that the true rule of faith as expressed in the Bible itself is scripture plus apostolic tradition, as manifested in the Catholic Church's living teaching authority, to which the oral teachings of Jesus and the apostles were entrusted, as well as the authority to correctly interpret scripture. The relationship between tradition and scripture is Defined in the Second Vatican Council Statement on Divine Revelation. De Verbum, Latin, the Word of God therefore, there exists a strong connection and communication between holy tradition and sacred scripture. Because they both flow from the same divine source, they integrate into a unity and strive for the same goal. Inasmuch as it is committed to writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, sacred scripture is the Word of God. Sacred tradition passes on God's Word, which was entrusted to the Apostles by Christ the Lord and the Holy Spirit, in its whole to their successors. Will you please notice that tradition is called both holy and sacred whereas the Word is sacred scriptures. That the Catholic Church's living teaching authority where the popes have made many bulls, not found and against the Word of God especially in aspect to Mary. Number 1, Catholic is not biblical but traditional. Catholic side, Mass, Papal Bull, Church of Alexandria, Vatican, Rome, Council of Trent, 
Council of Nicaea, Papal. Papal states, Spain, Latin, Roman, gods, goddesses, Latin, religion, planets, Odin, mythology, sorcery. Leader of the possessed, Thor, Roman god. Which calendar would God use? One reason why the dating of the rapture has been wrong, wrong calendar. Dershowitz and Rheingold, 2008, p. 45. Applebaum, Wilbur, 2000. Clavius, Christoph, 1538-1612. Encyclopedia of the Scientific Revolution, from Copernicus to Newton. Garland Publishing. ISBN 0-8153-1503-1. Blegan, 2013. Richards, 1998, p. 101. 1582 Papal Bull Inter Gravissimas. Richards, E. G., 1998. Mapping Time, the Calendar, and Its History. Oxford University Press. Richards, E. G., 2013. Calendars. In Urban, S. E., Seidelman, P. K. E. D. S. Explanatory Supplement to the Astronomical Almanac, 3rd Edition. Mill Valley, California, University Science Books. Pages 585 to 624. ISBN 978-1-891389-85-6. Ben Menahem, Ari, 2009. Historical Encyclopedia of Natural and Mathematical Sciences. 1 p. 863. Carabias Torres, A. M., 2012. Salamanca y la Mejida del Tiempo, in Spanish. Salamanca, Editions Universidad de Salamanca. Zigalar, A., 1983. Coyne, G. V., Hoskin, M. A., Patterson, O., E. D. S. The Papal Bull of 1582 Promulgating Reform of the Calendar. Gregorian Reform of the Calendar, Proceedings of the Vatican Conference to Commemorate its 400th Anniversary. Vatican City, Pontifical Academy of Sciences, Speculo Vaticano. Pages 201 to 239. Cayman, Henry, 1998. Philip of Spain. Yale University Press. P. 248. Metzi, E. Visa, F. 2010. Luigi Lilio Medico Astronomo e Matematico di Ciro. Reggio Calabria, La Rufa Editor. Pages 14. 52. Citing as primary references, Biblioteca Nazionale Centrale di Firenze, Magal. 5.10.5 slash A, ASVAA, Arma 18. 5506, F, 362R. Cohen, Ginny. Six things you may not know about the Gregorian calendar. History. Pragmatica on the 10 days of the year. World Digital Library. 1584, the first known South American imprint. Produced in 1584 by Antonio Ricardo, of a four-page edict issued by King Philip II of Spain in 1582. Decreeing the change from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar. Calendar, New Style, Act 1750, Section 3. Parliament of Great Britain via National Archives. Oxford English Dictionary, Oxford, Oxford University Press. Lieberman, Anatoly, March 7, 2007, on a self-congratulatory note, Oxford Etymologist Archives. Oxford, Oxford University Press. C. Bailey, M. Renard, R. Schilling, G. Dumazil, G. Capdeville. Varro upon Augustine de Civitate day 7 9 and 3, Servius Ain. I 449, Paulus ex Festus S. V. Chaos P. 45. Forsyth. Time in Roman Religion. H. H. Scullard, Festivals and Ceremonies of the Roman Republic, Cornell University Press, 1981. Mary Beard, John North, and Simon Price, Religions of Rome, Cambridge University Press, 1998. Michael Lipka. Roman Gods, 
A Conceptual Approach, Brill, 2009. H. H. Scullard. Festivals and Ceremonies of the Roman Republic, Cornell University Press, 1981. Scullard. Festivals and Ceremonies of the Roman Republic. Aisha Ben Abed, Tunisian Mosaics, Treasures from Roman Africa, Getty Publications, 2006. Chambers's Encyclopedia. London, George Nunes, 1961. Jacob Grimm Jeschik der Dutchen Sprache. Cap Monate. Carter, Jesse Benedict, 1900. The Cognomena of the Goddess Fortuna. Transactions and Proceedings of the American Philological Association. Turkin, Robert, 2001. The Gods of Ancient Rome Religion in Everyday Life from Archaic to Imperial Times. London, Routledge. Grimal, Pierre, 1996. The Dictionary of Classical Mythology. Blackwell. Ovid, Fasti 5.73, Turkin. The Gods of Ancient Rome. HTTPS colon slash slash www.gods and goddesses.com. Kepi, Lawrence, 1998. The Approach of Civil War. The Making of the Roman Army, From Republic to Empire. Norman, Oklahoma, University of Oklahoma Press. P. 102. ISBN 978-0-8061314-9. Suetonius, 121. Davida Caesarum, The Twelve Caesars. University of Chicago. Plutarch. Life of Caesar. University of Chicago. Joshua J. Mark, World History Foundation. Durant, W., Caesar and Christ. Simon and Schuster, 1972. H. H. Scullard. Festivals and Ceremonies of the Roman Republic, Cornell University Press, 1981. Chisholm, Q, edition, 1911. October. Encyclopedia Britannica, 11th edition. Cambridge University Press. Lyons, Gabriel, August 17, 2019. Sunday versus Monday, which day do you consider the start of the week? Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Retrieved February 11, 2021. Lapsansky, Emma Jones, January 26, 2003. Quaker Aesthetics, Reflections on a Quaker Ethic in American Design and Consumption, 1720-1920. University of Pennsylvania Press. Martyr, Justin, First Apology, 67.3. Hike, Thomas, September 27, 2013. A History of the Peoples of the British Isles, from 1688 to 1914. Taylor and Francis. Roth, Randolph A., April 25, 2002. The Democratic Dilemma, Religion, Reform. And the Social Order in the Connecticut River Valley of Vermont, 1791 to 1850. Cambridge University Press. Blue Law, American History. Encyclopedia Britannica. Blue Laws, the Encyclopedia of Oklahoma History and Culture. www.okhistory.org. Cambridge Dictionary. Online Etymology Dictionary. Guide to Quaker Calendar Names. Iowa Yearly Meeting, Conservative, Religious Society of Friends, Quakers. Is it better to fast on Mondays and Thursdays or on three days of each month? Islam question and answer. Fasting on Mondays Islam helpline. Saturn Jews. Eric Zafran Journal of the Warburg and Court Old Institutes. See also Hebrew University Professor Moshe Idel's book. Saturn Jews and Shlomo Sela's article Saturn and the Jews, University of Pennsylvania, about trends in late Judaism. Distancing it from the link between the Sabbath day and Saturn. Carvel, John, August 26, 2005. Monday is most common day for suicide. The Guardian. London. 
Monday is the most popular sick day. blog.taraganya.com, November 10, 2009. One stat website statistics and website metrics, press room. Oneastat.com. Random House Webster's Unabridged Dictionary. De Vries, Jan, 1962. Alt Nordisch's Etymologist's Wörterbuch, 1977 edition. Brill. ISBN. Simic, Rudolf, 2007, translated by Angela Hall. Dictionary of Northern Mythology. D.S. Brewer. ISBN 0-85991-513-1. Anglo-Saxon Week. English Heathenism. Archived from the original on September 24, 2009. Retrieved July 30, 2015. Stone, John Robert, 1997. Observing Bede's Anglo-Saxon Calendar. The English Companions. Online Etymology Dictionary. Etymonline.com. Why abstain from meat on Fridays, but eat fish? Catholic Financial Life. Archived from the original on March 29, 2019. No Fish Story, Sandwich Saved His McDonald's. USA Today. Villarubia, Eleanor, February 16, 2010. Why do Catholics eat fish on Friday? Catholicism.org. Falk, Michael, June 1999. Astronomical Names for the Days of the Week, Journal of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. Vettius Valens, 2010, 150 to 175, Anthologies, PDF, translated by Riley, Mark, Sacramento State. Richards, E. G., 1998. Mapping Time, The Calendar, and Its History. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-286205-1. Richards, E. G., 2013. Urban, Sean E., Seidelman, P., Kenneth, E.D.S. Explanatory Supplement to the Astronomical Almanac, 3rd Edition. Mill Valley, California. University Science Books. ISBN 978-1-891389-85-6. Suetonius. Caesar Archived. Suetonius, Augustus 31.2, Macrobius, Saturnalia. Suetonius, Caligula. Tacitus, Annal Surveyed in K. Scott. Honorific Months, Yale Classical Studies 2. Suetonius, Domitian. Ancient Israel, Its Life and Institutions, 1961, by Roland de Vaux, John McHugh, Publisher, McGraw, Hill, ISBN 978-0-8028-4278-7. Hebrew English Bible. Kurzweil. Arthur, 2011. The Torah for Dummies. John Wiley and Sons. ISBN 9781118051832. Mus Arnault, W. www.jstore.org slash stable slash 3259081 The names of the Assyro Babylonian months and their regions. Journal of Biblical Literature, Volume 11, Number 1, 1892. Telushkin, Joseph, 1991. Jewish Literacy, Most Important Things to Know About the Jewish Religion, Its People, and Its History. William Morrow & Co., 656. ISBN 0-688-08506-7. www.hebrewforchristians.com Rosh Chodesh Elul Slash Shir Hashirim Song of Songs Chapter 6 Chabad.org. Suissa. David, August 21, 2013. Love in the Time of Elul. Jewish Journal. Webster's Revised Unabridged Dictionary. The Free Dictionary, Farlex. 1913. History Crash Course No. 36, Timeline, From Abraham to Destruction of the Temple. 
by Rabbi Ken Spiro, ASH.com. Is Shavuot the Jewish Pentecost? My Jewish Learning. Neusner, Jacob, 1991. An Introduction to Judaism, a Textbook and Reader. Westminster John Knox Press. Jacobs. Lewis, 2007. Rosh Hashanah. In Birnbaum, Michael, Skolnick, Fred, eds. Encyclopedia Judaica. 17, Second Edition. Detroit, Macmillan Reference. Rav David Bar Haim. Rosh Hashanah in Israel, one day or two. Much on Shiloh website. Jerusalem, Much on Shiloh. Tractate Rosh Hashanah 20A. How Accurate Are Calendars? By Constantine Baikos. Yahweh's Restoration Ministry. Chicago Jewish News. Encyclopedia Britannica. John Wesley's Notes on the Whole Bible by John Wesley. Catholic Answers. An Early Rosh Hashanah? Ask the Rabbi. OzTorah.com.